Hi, this is Meline Velasquez. I am a licensed clinical social worker and a registered play therapist. Today I was hoping to talk a little bit about bibliotherapy and how I try to make books and stories engaging for the clients that I work with. The first thing that you want to think about when implementing bibliotherapy into your sessions is that you want to think about your client's presenting problem and then you want to choose literature that makes sense for the issue that your client is bringing into the session. The second thing is that you want to think about how are you going to integrate it into your work in a way that's playful and engaging for the people that you work with. I'll share a little bit about some ways that I have done it and hopefully that will help inform your practice. When thinking about what books to include in your office, you want to think about books that cover a wide range of issues and also books that can be specific. So when it comes to books that cover a wide range of issues, one of the ones that I really like is The Adventures of Sandy and Clammy. One of the things that I like about this book is that I can use it for things like self-esteem, I can use it for things like um, bringing hope, bringing empathy, and also healing from grief. So I might ask my client, would you like to hear a story? One of the things that I like to do with a book like this is I like to use a puppet that comes along with the stories of Sandy and Clammy. So I might actually um, read or paraphrase parts of the book and tell it to my client using the puppet. I'm going to be attuned to my client's cues. And depending on their level of engagement, I might come out of the story a little bit and just ask them, what do you think is going to happen next? Keeping in mind that depending on your clinical orientation, Every piece of information that a client gives you can tie back to the presenting issue that you're working on. Another strategy that I like to use is I like to tell stories using the sand tray. So I will have the client sit in front of me with a sand tray in the middle, and then I can choose to do one of two things. If it's a story that I'm really well familiar with, I'm going to play it out in the sand tray for the client to observe. The other option is that as I'm going through the story, I'm gonna have the client play out the story in the sand tray. A book that I really like to use when it comes to having clients play out the scene in front of them is Ziji, the puppy who learned to meditate. And I really like to use this book specifically when I'm working with children that are having a little bit of trouble concentrating because I think that meditation is something that can be really helpful in bringing focus. It can also be useful for children that are experiencing anxiety. So this can be an idea if you find it appropriate to work with children that are experiencing ADHD. And for example, on a scene like this, I will have um, read the book, I would hold it, and I would have the client play out the scene. And I have done this with children either on the sand tray or sometimes I have children that uh, for one reason or another feel uncomfortable with the texture of the sand. And so I have them do whatever play that they're showing outside of the tray, maybe on the floor. Whatever techniques that you're using, always make sure that you are attuned to what your client needs, that you're keeping flexibility in mind, and that they're connected to the issues that you're working on. If you've seen any of the other videos I've posted, you know that I find it really important to integrate parents into the treatment of their children, especially when it comes to trauma. So the third technique that I'm going to discuss is integrating the parent where maybe you have the child sitting on the parent's lap, of course, depending on the age. And then me as the therapist, I might be reading a story to them. I find that the act of having the child sit on the parent's lap and having the parent provide protection, or if it's an older child, having them kind of be close to the parent in whichever way that they feel comfortable with, is really important in helping to reestablish that sense of safety and that their parent or caregiver is somebody that they can trust when symptoms arise and that they can also trust them to protect them. Of course, if you're going to do this technique and you're going to have the parent sitting with a child as you're reading the story, you want to practice it ahead of time with the parent because you want to get a feel as to their comfort level. So you want to have the parent in the session sitting with a doll or a stuffed animal or a pillow as you tell the story. And you want to check in with a parent. How is this feeling for you? How do you imagine that your child is going to react in these different parts of the story? What do you think will be their favorite part? How are you feeling as I'm reading these different parts of the story? So you really want to get check in with them and get them really, really comfortable 
so that you can have the most success when you do the intervention. And you also want to have in mind that things might happen. Maybe the child won't want to hear the story. Maybe the parent will react differently than how you practiced it. And so you want to troubleshoot that with the parents, but you also want to troubleshoot that with yourself as you're planning the session. Always making sure that whichever intervention that you're bringing, especially when it comes to trauma, you want to know that it's the right time for the child to hear the story and that it's the right time for the parent to witness the hearing of the story. If you're working with a family through a book and the family is really connecting with a story, sometimes I find that helpful for the family, if possible, to purchase the book. But I find that if we're working through that book in session, for the parents to have it and then to reread it to the child. For some children, that can really help to speed up treatment. For parents, it really helps to provide that sense of safety. Always ensuring that it is clinically appropriate for the family that you're working with. And a nice transition once you've done some bibliotherapy is to then go into the place of creating stories for the families that you're working with, um, whether you are creating them as a clinician or whether you're creating them together with a family. I'll link my video on storytelling up there. So these are three strategies for integrating bibliotherapy into your work with clients. I hope that this was useful and helpful to your practice. If there's anything else that you would like to hear, please let me know. Thank you. Bye.